Welcome to another video. I just wanted to show you a little experiment that I've been working on during this quarantine period, which looks like it's going to be a really long time. So to make a long story short, I wasn't really up to making a whole sweater, and I thought what I would do is use some color work patterns from Marie Wallen sweaters and other designers and incorporate those charted designs into a beanie hat. And this was my first experiment with that, and I'm really happy with my first attempt, but I've made a lot of errors in my mind, and I thought if other people are on this color work slash design your own hat journey, I would thought I would just share my journey, and if you want to follow along, I would, I would love to get comments and create a community of knitters around experimentation with Fair Isle knitting designs. Um, so for the crown, so I've got this all on a balloon, for I... For the crown, I used the Shetland Wool Week Oliver's Hat crown pattern, and that's super cool, but there's issues with that too, in my mind. And then I used the sleeve, the motif charted designs from the sleeve of Marie Wallen's Windermere sweater. And the yarn I used is wolf oak tinned, and I used a 3mm needle for the color work sections and a 2.75 millimeter for the ribbing and it fits around my 22 and a half inch circumference head. So what I realized in doing this pattern is that a two color design does not stand out as well in, with a motif like this. I think it would stand out better with multiple colors in the background. At this angle I can see the motif stands out really well but if I ch change the angle in certain uh, areas where the light hits it, it yeah, I'm having a hard time sh demonstrating this on the video but with certain angles it almost looks like there's just a lot of white patches and that's it, the motif doesn't stand out. So it has to be at a certain angle in order for the motif to stand out. That was one issue I found. Um, the other big mistake I made is not centering the main motif in the center of the garment. And I realized Marie had done that, and I was so excited to start knitting this motif that I didn't uh, stop and think. The main motif maybe might look better if it were centered on the garment the way she did on the sleeve and on the body of her sweater. So that was one thing. And so I thought, okay, on my next experiment, I think I'm going to try her lap wing sweater, and it's a much bigger motif, and I'm going to make sure that I design, well, I use the charted designs in a way where I'm going to center that main motif on the hat in this section, and then build up some supporting designs before and after. So the reason why I did what I'm doing here, sorry, we're trying to angle the camera so you can see it without seeing it. <laughs> We're not using a tripod today. So the reason why I chose two rows of designs like this is because I had to knit Katie's cap all winter and that was just stuck in my mind that I should do two rows of two uh, motifs and one of the reasons why this didn't work out as well is because this motif is bigger than... sorry, I'm trying to support the camera with my son's hand holding it. So this motif was bigger than this motif, so this is bigger, that's smaller. I don't know, I think it's okay. I, maybe I'm being overly critical, but uh, I think I w would like to try something different next time. I had Katie's kept that patterning so stuck in my mind, I kind of was using it as a rule, and it doesn't have to be that way, so now I feel more liberated to think differently. But uh, this is like a stepping stone for me in trying to figure out how to actually design. Um, and since I'm not feeling that great, I'm just using other people's charted designs. And of course, I'm not going to share those designs online. I purchased the pattern. And I'll just reference on my Ravelry account uh, what rows from these charted designs that I used in case you want to knit a hat that looks like this. So I'll just make some final comments on the crown. I'm trying to see if my son can rest his arm on my shoulder so we can finish this in one take. Okay, so on the crown, it was super fun. I've never done a pinwheel crown like this before, so that was neat. I thought there was a mistake in the chart, and I thought this must be a slip slip, 
knit SDK decrease and I thought there was an error in the pattern. Of course, I should have never assumed there was an error in the pattern, but what happens is we, you're starting to knit these pinwheel sections and there's this white edging that goes all along here. And at this intersection, that ends. And I didn't realize that, and so I did a slip slip knit there and it should have been just a knit two together so that this rust area stays rust all the way up this line and that's the decrease line right there. So I can do a duplicate stitch over that white stitch blip or I can just leave it as a design feature and I'm just going to leave it as a design feature unless it starts to bother me. I can always go over it again with a duplicate stitch. But um, this was super fun and I'm not sure this these pinwheels tend to want to just have their points and this is laying very flat so I'm not sure if this will ever block out to be smooth, super smooth. There's a little ridges here. Maybe that's just an inherent part of the design and you just live with it.